I'm going to go on and get started because now we're, we're a minute over. So it's great today because I'm not going to read the story to you. This, this time, we actually have the author who's going to be with us to celebrate, again, World um, Migratory Bird Day, Birds Connect Our World. And one of the ways that we wanted to be able to connect with all of you, especially because our on the ground festivals can't happen right now um, because we can't gather in groups. And so we're gathering in groups, but we're connecting you. You're, as you heard, you're from all over, uh, all over the world, actually. We get people in from, um, boy, we've got you in from Canada. We've had Israel, we've had all sorts of places. And I live in Colorado. So um, I'm really glad to meet all of you. Hopefully maybe sometime I'll get to meet you in person. Um, but today, again, the fun thing about our story time is that you're going to get to meet the author of the book, and he's going to read the book. So you get to have the real person who did it, and he can talk a little bit about what does it mean to be a book author or to write a book um, for young people or to write a book like this and have such inc incredible illustrations with it. We're also going to start with a little bit about why birds sing, um, learn some different bird songs. I have a little quiz for you, of course. And then you get to see if you can stump the experts. We also have Louise Zemitis um, and Michael O'Brien on the line. And when it's time to bring them on, I'll turn their cameras on. And you'll get to listen to them, listen to the recordings, and see if they can figure out uh, what bird species it is. So just to prepare you, Louise and Michael, um, these, ki these kids are coming from all over. And they ask amazing questions every week. So... I'm always excited about their questions and their interest and their enthusiasm. So I'm gonna get going because I know you don't wanna hear me, you want to hear John. So I'm gonna start John just real briefly with um, a brief description of why birds sing. So all those birds that are coming into your yard or your neighborhood, they have a couple of reasons why they sing. One is to announce that, hey, this is my place. This is my territory. Kind of like your house is your place and your yard. Uh, birds have their place and space out in the wild, and they like to protect it just like you protect your home. They also sing to attract mates. So that is the, the female bird, and usually it's the male bird or the boy that's going to sing. Sometimes the girls sing too, but usually it's the male or the boy. And he's singing because he wants to let the girls know that he's there and he's ready to nest. And so that's the way that he announces his message that he is in the area and ready to nest. So especially since some of these birds don't live there year round, some of them come in and they migrate there. That means they're traveling from another location where they spent the winter months and they're coming to your place where they're going to nest. Some of them even uh, do courtship duets. They sing together just like we do. So males and females or other males, they might sing as a, or actually males and females, they might sing as a duet. And you'll also hear some birds in the wild who do what's called counter singing, where one bird sings and then another bird sings. It's a beautiful sight, as you can see from these cranes. And then um, others they say, they think some of them, maybe they're just showing off or maybe they just enjoy singing. You know, we always feel like we know why animals do what they do, but we really don't know everything about them. We can't know everything. So perhaps they just want to sing or perhaps it's a way of showing how healthy they are or how strong they are. We don't know all of the reasons why birds sing. And that is a brief introduction to why birds sing. And so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to turn this over to you, John, and let you introduce your book, which is just, it's beautiful. I have my copy of it now. All you guys out there, if you wanna get a copy, it is really such a pretty book. But I'm gonna turn it over to you. I'm gonna turn my camera off and let you take it away. You just tell me when you're ready to um, change the slide and I'll do that for you. Oh, John, sorry, you're muted. Let me unmute you. All right, there you oh, go. I'm free. Hi, Susan, you're thank free. you. Hi, kids. Hi, parents. Hi, everyone. Uh, I, I write and illustrate children's books, and I've been doing this for getting close to 40 years now. And I tend to write about things that I'm interested in and things that I want to know more about. I think one of the best ways to learn something 
is to write a book about it. And uh, this Noisy Bird Sing Along is uh, actually last in a series of three books. I did Noisy Bugs, Noisy Frogs, and I and I ended with the birds. And I just um, I just love sounds. I love the the challenge of being able to identify a bird based on the sound that it's making. And you could do that, and you could do it uh, with with a bit of practice. And I find um, I often hear the bird before I actually see it. Um, sometimes I only hear the bird, and the the challenge is to try to track that singing bird down and and watch it sing. And that's one of the best ways to learn how to re remember these bird calls. And there's a couple of other little tricks too that I'll I'll be sharing. But watching the bird sing just makes it stick in your brain that picture of the birds and it attaches it with that song the picture and and the sound um and it's it's kind of a fun treasure hunt to do as well so i did uh this book is about singing birds um some of them are noisy but most of them i, I kind of like their sound and so let's get started uh before we i think i um i'm going to just read the first page and hold it up because i don't know if i sent that forward but we love to listen to the singing birds. Each one has its very own song. Let's sing those songs with them. So when you hear me uh, say the bird song, uh, I, I want you to try singing it yourself too. Okay, so if we could have the first picture. Some birds, some bird songs sound like sentences. A robin starts the morning with a cheerful wish. Cheerio, 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 cheerio. Try it. Try saying that. It's a it's a happy sound, and it's a sound to me. It's a sound of spring here in the northeast. Um, a wet lawn is a favorite place for robins to hunt for worms. Next page. White throated sparrows add a warm tune to a cold winter morning. Oh sweet Canada, Canada, Canada. Oh sweet Canada, Canada, Canada. Sparrows look for seeds and berries in the thick bushes. Now, <laughs> um, my publisher, when I did this this uh, this spread on the white-throated sparrows, I originally had them saying, "Poor Sam, Peabody, Peabody, Peabody," which is in the United States. That's kind of what we hear. But if you're in Canada, you hear, "Oh, sweet Canada, Canada, Canada." And my publisher said, "Well, you know, we have we have people buying your books in Canada, so let's include them too." So I did. Um, and you're going to hear the actual song a, a little bit later on. It's such a sweet sound. It's a rich sound that you often hear as the sun is going down. And the Oh Sweet Canada or the Poor Sweet, uh, Oh Poor Sam Peabody, those are called mnemonics. It's a way to remember a call using a sentence that sort of has that, that um, rhythm of the call. You know, just a, a little trick that we do. Okay, next page. A yellow warbler sings sweetly near a stream. Sweet, sweet, I'm so sweet. Sweet, sweet, I'm so sweet. All right, let's hear it. Okay. <laughs> yellow warblers nest in wetlands where there are plenty of insects to eat. It's, and it's a very fast, high-pitched, and it is, it's a sweet call. I, I love the call of, of the yellow warbler. Next page. The deep voice of a barred owl seems to ask a question. Question, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? Most owls hunt for small mammals at night when the mammals are most active. So again, here's another handle, another mnemonic that helps people remember that call. It really sounds like um, they're also, they're called monkey owls because you get two barred owls going back and forth and back and forth. They sound like monkeys up in the trees. I, I love barred owls. I have them nesting in my yard, as a matter of fact. Um, and you'll they'll call in late afternoon all the way into the evening. Okay, next page, please. So here's a namesayer. Some birds say their name. A black capped chickadee pops up on a branch. Chickadee dee dee dee. Chickadee dee dee dee. Black cat chickadees live in woodlands where they find plenty of insects and seeds to eat. So there are birds that do, uh, it's called automatopoeia. It's a long, long word, but it basically means the, the word sounds like the sound it's describing, like crash, sounds like crash. Boom, sounds like boom. Um, beep, sounds like beep, the word beep. So chickadee 
is actually a word that sounds like the sound that the bird is making, chickadee, and the bird got named for it. This page, please. Oh, I love these. A whippoorwill whistles from the edge of a swamp. Whippoorwill, whippoorwill, which really is more like and down in the southeast, we they have the Chuck Will's widow, and it's and again, it's another namesayer. It's a bird that's saying its name, um, and it's that automatopoeia. Then that name is the sound that the bird makes at the same time. What's really cool about these are the those bright red glowing eyes that you see at night, and what that is, it's reflecting the light of your flashlight or, or headlights. Um, sometimes all you see are these glowing eerie red eyes in the dark. And um, it's one of these really cool whippoorwills, if you want. Okay, next page. Ah. Some birds just make sounds. A mallard quacks in a pond. Quack, 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 quack. And that's the sound that you, you associate with ducks. You think of duck, you think of quack. You think of frog, you think of croak. So, uh, and it's the female mallard that actually does that quack, 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 quack. They both make sounds, and that's the male in the background, see a little more colorful. The, the male birds are generally more colorful because they're trying to attract the attention of the females, who are usually sort of the colors of the background of, of where they're nesting, because they don't want to be found when they're sitting on the nests. So mallards are dabbling ducks. They tip their bodies forward underwater to find seeds and water plants. Okay, next page. I think we skipped one. Let's see if maybe it's just out of order. Okay, nuthatches sound like they have stuffy noses. You gotta pinch your nose when you do this. They're like little wind-up toys. They just you they just run up and down the sides of trees and there's making that funny sound. Um and they're I, I love nuthatches. They're sort of honorary woodpeckers because they do uh peck you know, peck their nests into, into the wood into the trees um, and their white bellies reflect light on the bark which helps them find insects and we here in the northeast we get um, we also have red belly nuthatches that make a sort of they sound like a, a tin tin horn um, red breasted nuthatches I'm sorry um, next page please let's see if if we found that lost one. Oh, it's not there um, I'm sure it's there somewhere Hummingbird wings hum in a blur of motion. Mm -hmm. They actually sound like a big wasp. Um, and it's and here's a different way that birds make sounds. They use their wings. It's hummingbird isn't just humming along like like we do. It's the vibration of the wing that the wings that make that humming sound. Hummingbirds zip from flower to flower to sip sweet nectar. Okay, next page, please. A downy woodpecker taps away on a hollow branch. Downy woodpeckers tap into trees and bark to find beetle larvae, caterpillars, and other insects to eat. And they also use it, as Susan was talking about, to, to signal other birds. It's the, the males are saying, this is my territory, so you all, you, all you guys stay away. And um, it's also attracting females. Um, so they're looking for bugs, they're signaling to other birds, and it's how they get inside the tree. They carve a hole in um, in the tree in which they, they make a nest. Okay, next page, please. Ah, these guys. A house sparrow chirps from atop a brick wall. Chirp, 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 chirp. Many house sparrows live in crowded cities where they search for crumbs in parking lots. And we have house sparrows all over the place. And they were brought here into New York City, uh, Brooklyn, about 1851, where they wanted, they imported these birds from Europe, where they wanted them to eat the insects in Central Park. And some people, they, you know, a lot of these people were immigrants from Europe and they missed the sounds of home. And these are noisy birds. Now here's a noisy bird for real. Um, and that, and that sort of brought back memories of home hearing those birds. And uh, another reason too, back in those days, they had all the horse and buggies in the roads in New York and horses leave behind a mess. They leave horse manure and these birds will come 
and, and picking through the seeds, they sort of spread it out and it dries up and it's easier to clean up. So these were very welcome uh, immigrants <laughs> to the United States back in the 1800s and they just spread out after a few releases after that. Um, they're all over the country. Um, let's see if there's any more pages left. There should be two more that didn't show up. Ah, not there. I'm gonna show you the two pages because I happen to have the book right here. So, a woodcock calls when the sun has set. Set, ping, let me see if I get this. Ping, 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 ping. Um, these are really cool birds. They're kind of like shorebirds that that live on land. They got this super long beak here that they stick into the soil and they pull worms out. It's, it's for fishing for worms. Um, and they have the weirdest sound when they fly. I actually have a recording of this. It sounds like an alien coming in for a landing. Listen to this. And those are the wings that make that sound. This is our Merlin bird. Um, and when they're flying, they're, their wings are, have, are just shaped and um, they have all kinds of gaps and things in there that where the air goes through and it makes that weird, trippy kind of alien, alien sound. And the, the, these guys, back to the woodcocks or timber doodles, they got a, a cool name, timber doodles. Um, they do something called lecking where at dusk they all gather and they'll just go ping, 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 and they go flying around, and all you see is the silhouette, and they all sort of gather in these big fields, and then they go off, they lay their eggs, and they're on their own again. Um, and there was one more page that, that didn't show up. That, that we'll, we'll, we'll skip it. So let's go to this, this last page. Bring all the birds together for a chorus of song. Yeah. Here come the real calls. I hear the chickadee. I hear a wood. I hear the wood for what? There's the barn owl. I hear the hummingbird. Okay, we'll end it right there. The end. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. And You're I don't know what happened to that page because I know that I saw at least the woodcocks, so I'm not sure where that went. Um, but a couple more things. One is that we give them a chance to ask you some questions, but the yeah. other is I always give them a little quiz um, to see how much they caught from your story. So first, you guys, um, I'm going to play a song, and I want to see if, based on what John taught you, if you know what song this is. I think it's telling them. <laughs> I know. Hopefully, they can't read yet. Some of them. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, by the sound, it's saying its name, a namesayer. <laughs> exactly. So which one was a namesayer? Ah, we got a couple answers from Abigail and Elma say chickadee uh, from the McGuire family said hummingbird, but I think we can hear it say chickadee dee dee dee. Pranjal got chickadee, Rebecca, good job you guys. So it is the chickadee. I'm gonna go to the next page. Whoops. All right, let's try another one. I'll see if I can do it without it showing the Oh dear, it does just show it, doesn't it? Put your hand over the screen. All right, which one was that? All right, good job. We've got from the Hildreth family, a barred owl. From the Alvarado family, a barred owl. Rebecca is correct, barred owl. We've got a bunch more answers coming in correct for barred owl. Good job. All right, and how about this one? Last one. And I got one answer. Oh, we got a bunch. Robin. Anyone who said Robin is correct. Most of you got that right. All right, good job. 
Okay, so we have a couple more activities for today. First is, um, if you would like to ask John a question about being an author, about his work with bird sounds, um, now's your chance to do it. And then we'll move to the recordings and bring on, again, Louise and Michael. So I know that one um, person, I think Pranjal had a question about the woodpecker and he said, don't they also make a high peak sound? They do, yep. Um, and you can tell, again, you can identify the woodpecker by the sound it makes. Um, some of them are pretty close together, like a downy woodpecker and a hairy woodpecker sound pretty close. And it takes a bit of practice uh, being able to, to tell them apart, but what a fun thing to be able to practice, to go out and, and, and learn. So yes, they do have vocalizations, but what we mostly notice is them banging on trees, because that just kind of reverberates through the woods. So John Laurie wants to know, do you get to choose who does the art for your book? I do the art for my book, so I definitely get to choose. I, I, I'm an illustrator as well. So, and, and often the illustrations come uh, before the story does. And um, in this case, the story came first, but it's, they're usually 50-50. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, the art is beautiful. It's so bright. Thank you. Uh, Abigail wants to know if you have, oh no, that's Henrietta age six, wants to know if you have a favorite bird? Um, I, let's see, I really, really love nuthatches. They just, they just, I just, they cheer me up because they just watching them zip around and they make that comical sound. And I just think they're really cool to look at too. Just their whole shape and um, I love them. I just absolutely love them. And, and just recently I heard two of them in my yard, they were courting and I heard sounds they were making that I never, I didn't know that was them. I didn't know they made these kinds of little chittery kind of sounds. But usually it's just, you, you got to pinch your nose. <laughs> it's kind of fun to do. They are fun. Yeah. Uh, Pancho wants to know, um, for John, do you record audio of birds? I recorded all these bird calls. They actually, for the three books in the series, the frogs, the bugs, and the birds, there was an app to go with it where I had to go out and record the birds, which um, I have recording equipment. Um, kind of fun to do is get my own calls and mix them all together. Or use Merlin, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we haven't taught the apps yet, but okay. Let's see. From Cody. Cody wants to know where you live. I live in Killingworth, Connecticut. It's a little town in, in Connecticut. All right. How do the birds, oh, this is a great question. Can't wait to hear your answer to this. Mm -hmm. How do the birds know what they are saying? How do they know what they're saying? Huh, I just think it's, it's in them. They're born with that ability to sing, and they, that's why they all kind of sound alike. The, uh, the, the, the same species all tend to sound like the same species. A blue jay, in, in Connecticut is going to probably sound a lot like a blue jay in New York, unless you know, there are little differences here and there. It's kind of weird, uh, just blue jays. Uh, they imitate hawk calls. And I used to live in an area where there were red-tailed hawks just, just going here, here overhead. And the, the blue jays in my yard would go here, here, here. Now I live in an area where there's red-shouldered hawks. They go kia, kia, kia. The blue jays in my yard go kia, kia, kia. So they kind of know or that I don't know what they know, but they're they're reflecting the calls around them as well. So I don't know if they specifically know if they're getting it right, um, but I think they usually do. And Pranjal wants to know, but do some birds learn their songs from their parents? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I think I'm sure there's a scientist out there who's done who's done experiments. Do you know, Susan? Yeah, I believe that they do learn from yeah. the songs that they hear around them. So they are learning, or some species at least, learn from the adult birds uh, at, after they've hatched, or maybe even in the egg. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I know so, some learn from the other birds, like mockingbirds and catbirds. They'll imitate the other birds around them. So um, a lot of those are, are fresh calls that, that they didn't know when they were born. All right, I'm gonna let you have one more question because I think it's so good also um, before we move to the bird songs. And this question is, can one species of bird talk to other birds? Um, I, in different ways, um, they can make 
They can make certain calls that might cause another bird to back off. I don't think they communicate uh, with as much intent or detail as two birds that are in the same species, but I'm sure I know they hear each other. And what those sounds mean to them, I don't know. I don't know, I have to ask a bird. That's great. All right, so here's um, when we give everybody a chance uh, if they wanna come online or come on and do a, be on camera. So I'm gonna bring on Louise, are you out there? Yeah, we're here. We're here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off my camera because I have a limited number of cameras. Do you guys wanna put on your camera? Uh, uh oh. How do you do that? I'm sorry. Working on it. <laughs> turn that on, and then I'm gonna give um, one of our listeners a chance to be online. So, um, Bonjour, you said that oh, you we're have. On. <laughs> there we go. Hi, Louise and Michael. So good to see you. Hi. Hi. Hi, John. Hello. These are our experts, you guys. Um. Pranjal, if you would like, I will let you come on and play your recording. Uh, so while I'm getting you on, um, I'm going to play a recording for Boaz because Boaz said that he has a bird, but he did not get it recorded. So I'm going to play that for him. And let's see if we can identify this. So just a second. Here we go. Oh, where is he? Wow, where was that from? So ask me, tell me where you live in the chat box. Sounds familiar. and I'm waiting for Boaz's answer. So Boaz, if you could write in the box where you live so that they can get an idea about that species. I'm gonna play it again. He said Orange County, California. Oh. Yeah, I know, that's a tough time. Yeah. You want me to play it again? Sure. All right. <laughs> I think, I, yeah, I think that's a couple birds, isn't it? Well, that, there's definitely more than one bird there, but that that cooing, I'm not really sure what that is. Oh my gosh! You've <laughs> 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 identified it correctly. Should I give it to you and see if that's correct? That it would be in Orange County, California. What? It, yeah. What is it? A wida. Oh, okay. Why did an arch oh, is that That's an introduced bird there. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, okay. I told you they had hard questions. <laughs> that was a tough one. Have you heard no of yeah. before? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I learned a new bird call today. Yeah, me too. So did I. We get pintailed whiters around here, but I never got to see one here. That's pretty awesome. Cool. Why does All right. Can you tell me right? how to pronounce yeah. your name? Oh, Susan, the way you pronounced it was absolutely correct. Oh, oh wow, that was good. So do you want to say it for us too? Pranjal. Okay, and Pranjal, where are you from? Puerto Rico. Okay, nice. excellent. Hmm. Would you like to play your song for Louise and Michael? Yeah, sorry, it's not the best. Wow. Can you hear it? I'm just hearing a faint little chirp. Yeah. So do you know what it is? I, well, I can't really hear it very well. It's a little distorted and you want to play it again? Yeah. Can you hear that? Can you hear it? Not yeah, you know, I can't hear that well enough. It's something to... like a pitirre call. Oh, like that. What, it, what is it? Pitirre. Like pitirre, like... Like a pitirre call. Like, it's calling. With pitirre. Like, its notes are pitirre. 
Mm -hmm. That's their call. So do you know what species this is, Pranjal? Well, the name gives it away in Spanish. But in English, you... it's the gray kingbird. Oh. Wow. Oh. OK. Huh. All right. Did, did you record that? Gray kingbird. What? Gray, gray kingbird. kingbird. Um, well, I recorded it a few moments ago. Huh. All right. That wasn't the best I used my dad's phone. Oh. <laughs> we also have the wax bills around here. And they give like their flight calls a lot. Do you know what? All right, cool. Are, how they're introduced. All right, good job. So, does anybody <laughs> else have a recording? I've got another one here. Hopefully, something see. we know. <laughs> Sorry to, to give you the hard ones at the start. Okay, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this one for you. Did you hear that? Uh, barely. I thought I heard a phrase of a robin, but I'm not really, no. didn't really hear it very well. Okay. You're close. So let me see if I can get it closer to the. Oh, maybe a wood thrush. Oh, yeah, there's yeah, a wood thrush. Yeah. I just heard part of it there. Yeah. Wood they thrush. have that right. EOLA phrase. Yeah, beautiful song. All right. I'm going to. They're on their way here. Oh, um, <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Yay. Can't Another wait till they get here. Another couple weeks or so in Connecticut. Yeah. All right, oh, I'm going to put you guys on. Oh, Stephanie, you don't have a camera. Um, so I'm just going to I'm going to unmute you. I don't see a camera. But, well, wait a second. Let me see if I can get you on as a. Let's All right, let's see if I sound. I think I can get you on camera, Stephanie. Hang on just a second. All right. So Stephanie, I got your audio, but I don't see a camera by your name, so maybe you don't have one. But we're ready for your song. All right. Could you hear the bird behind all that talking? Yeah, and you would. Well, let's try playing it again. I just heard one little noise. Oh, okay. I'm not hearing anything. Oh, okay. I'm going to try it for you. Um, let me see sent me a request for that one, so let me see if I can okay. Is that Definitely. your sound meeting for There we go. All right, so let me play this one for you guys. I'm not hearing anything. Oh my god, Oh, wait a second. Hmm. Let me try again. It's coming through really loud for me. Hmm. Huh. Well, it's just silence from here. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's silent right now. It's not replaying for me. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah, it is. Seems like she's in mute. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm not playing. I'm sorry. Hmm. Oh, there was a kestrel there, I think. Is that a, I thought I heard kestrel. So, yeah. Try again. Let 
thoughts about that one? Well, we could, really <laughs> couldn't hear anything. It's funny, we can't hear you, but we can't hear the There was one little sound. moment where there was a, a few little notes that sounded maybe like a kestrel, but, but most really it was just silence. Yeah, well, you were on the right track with a raptor. It was an osprey. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder why we couldn't hear it. I yeah, don't know. It's I really, can't yeah, the sounds that are coming through are like are really oh, distorted. Like cracked up. Yeah, really yeah. distorted. Yeah, that's too bad. Okay, so probably we should learn. We will have to figure out a way to play them a different way for this yeah. program. Yeah, but thanks. Do you guys want to answer that question about bird song and how birds learn their song? Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, there's different ways. Um, for a lot of birds, they do learn from from the uh, their parents singing around them, or actually other birds singing around them. Sometimes, uh, if there's a, a different species that's uh, nesting right nearby, and the young happens to hear that uh, a lot, it, it may incorporate some of that sound into its into its song. Um, uh, so, so there's a lot of a lot of variety. That's some of the variety that we hear in bird songs is is because they're uh, you know learning from other other birds around them. Uh, but there are a, a number of species that have uh, like flycatchers, for example, have innate uh, sound. Uh, they they know they sort of innately know those uh, songs. Uh, there's in fact been some experiments with them where they will um, take the uh, the eggs. Um, of uh, some types of flycatchers and and bring them into a uh, you know an enclosed uh, area uh, for the study and they don't hear there's no parents there uh, for them to hear and then they grow up to sing just like their parents did so um, you know really really interesting so it's different ways for different species I've always been intrigued about brown-headed cowbirds mm -hmm. they don't really sing because they're they don't learn from their parents they never see their they have sort of a wimpy little song yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they know each other they communicate but lots of lots of variety in bird sounds yeah. it's uh, one of the fun things about yeah, it yeah yeah john your book is awesome by the way thank you oh no, we you. love it yeah and yeah. the illustrations the are wonderful really nice. yeah yeah it's just like really. most of the northern sounds say northeastern because in the western side we don't get much of the wood talks white yeah. it's 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 pretty much northeast or or the yeah. eastern part of the states. Yeah. And so let me give um, one more person the opportunity to ask a question and come on camera if they want to. Uh, you can let me know in the chat box. And um, in the meantime, we had a couple more bird calls, but I'm a little hesitant to play them because you're having a hard well, time. it's worth a try. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> you want yeah. to give it a try? Think sure, so, yeah. Laura. All right, Laura Marsh, <laughs> you guys on. So hold on just a second. Um, here you go. I'm going to put you on as a panelist, and your camera will be available if you have a camera. So, Laura Marsh, you can hit your, you do have a camera, so if you want to turn it on, you can. And then you can play your, play it. Ah, there we go. Hi. <laughs> we see you. We should be able to hear you. <laughs> I oh, see heard? them, but I don't hear them. Oh, they have to. Oh shoot, they have to hit their. They're muted for some reason. Uh, they're not muted on my end. So hmm. Laura, I can see that you're unmuted. So something's going on with your um, audio there. They we have. Heard first came on. I, I turned off. Can you hear anything now? Talking, yeah, but we can't hear her. Okay, let me um, see if you can work that out. Um, no, Boaz, do you actually have a recording, Boaz, or do you have? Try to do it this way. Play. I can put one more person up here. Okay, I'm going to put Boaz up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Boaz. They're having microphones. Right, Boaz, you can turn on your camera. Um, sorry, Laura, that didn't work. I'll see if I can find the bird that you said. Uh, okay, here comes Boaz. Hi, Boaz. I don't see an audio for you. 
There's just like one more button. Do you have an audio? Do you have a sound, Boaz? We still can't hear you either. I think a little technical difficulty today, Louise. This is an <laughs> Michael. <laughs> We still can't hear you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up what um, Laura wanted to play. And see if we can get that song for you. All right. Here we go. See if you can hear this. Hasn't started yet. Can you hear it? You know, for some reason, uh, no, no, you know, when you everybody. when you play it, it's got, uh, you know, there was like one little half a second of just noise and then silence. Wait, maybe she are you? She should just play it on her iPhone and we can hear. Yeah, if you just play it on your phone to your right to the camera, maybe that would help. Or right to the um, computer. That's actually what I'm doing. That is? For <laughs> yeah. some reason it sort of maybe it selects human voices and, and as a preference and, and uh cuts out some of these high frequency sounds. No, but it I don't think about that. Let me try one more time and we'll see that. Um Julie says we should open the sidebar chat area, go to the top and select the correct option from the down. Oh, oh I, hear, blue I hear a blue jay. Oh, yeah. Somebody just played a blue jay. <laughs> I know that one. Yay. <laughs> How about that tapping sound in the background? Is that one coming through? I still hear the blue jay. I just heard a blue jay again. I don't hear a tapping sound. Okay. Titmouse. That was good. All right. I'm gonna call that because uh, that's a that's a funny one that I uh, you know we can hear it on our phones, but not not when we play it for you. Does anyone else have a question for Louise, Michael, or John? Yeah, so I think I think you're right. I think certain noises are getting filtered out, so that's good to know. Hmm. Um, Sarah wants to know what bird is a namesayer and says cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Oh, I know, I know. Carolina Wren. Yeah, Carolina Wren. That's a good one. <laughs> they also say video, video, video. Yes. Yeah. Tea kettle, tea kettle. Or... What's the other one? <laughs> tea kettle, tea kettle. Pick your, pick your favorite <laughs> three-syllable word and say it over and over. <laughs> There you go. All right. I think that we've gotten all the questions. So again, I want to thank our special guest. Oh, Robin. <laughs> There's me. I want to remind you guys to come online. Um, we do have a story time next week. Oh, you know, this must be what happened. Um, come on next week and register for the next uh, story time with us and we'll look forward to seeing you again. I'm, I'm so happy to see returning faces and that you guys are getting involved in the activities that we're doing every week. So thanks again to our guests. If you guys send me your addresses, we've got some World Migratory Bird Day cool swag for you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> and for you, um, Michael, someone said hello to you. Who was that? There was a oh. lot of messages. Going around. Uh, Julie Brown. Hi, Louise. Oh, hi, Julie. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. So, thanks so much. Appreciate it, everyone. Always good to see you all. All right. Great. Bye. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thanks, John. thanks, Louise. Thanks, Michael. And they turned off. Just hit the red button. Don't push out. Yep. No, that, no. <laughs>